This is just about um, regrinding some rotor broach cutters. Um, it says on the internet that you can't really grind them without the, the special attachment. It's a special um, grinding attachment for grinding these cutters. Uh, I've, I've ground these for years for a customer. Never had any comeback. Always been happy with them. Always done the job. Uh, I just grind them on a um, and on a little tool and cutter grinder which I made up myself years ago. The attachment can can be quite expensive but if you have access to a, a small tool and cutter grinder it's it's really uh, fairly, well not saying fairly easy but it's it's reason, reasonably easy to grind them, to re-grind them if you know what you're doing that is. Um, these are the type of cutters um, Uh, they're double angled, that's the tricky part. If they were straightforward um, backed off front teeth like an end mill, well you wouldn't have any problem. But um, it just makes it a little bit more awkward with a double angle. Well, you can see. Unlike an end mill, these don't uh, cut on the, uh, on the diameter. They're just at radial lands. And this is a view of my uh, tool on cutter grinder which I put together many years ago. Um, the one thing about this which is really versatile is uh, it has a tilting wheel head. Now for indexing uh, each tooth I use um, a piece of saw blade which is ideal because it's got just the correct amount of springiness. And this is the best way really of indexing the regrinding slot drills, end mills and, uh, and these rotor brooches because it's indexing on each flute and this is the correct way in tool and cutter grinding to, uh, to grind them teeth. You can use uh, dividing head but I've always used this method and I've used this method for, for years and it's always served well. Here's another view of grinding the, 15, the first 15 degree angle. Uh, the wheel head on this machine is tilted. The clearance angle uh, I put, uh, I, I think it was seven, 7 to 8 degrees, which uh, is enough. You don't want any more because it just weaken the cutting edge. You do need to be careful um, setting the wheel so there's enough clearance so it doesn't catch the tooth above it's very easy just to uh, touch the uh, tooth above you must make sure that the wheel does clear in the in the gullet so you do need to set um, a stop on your machine so that uh, it won't go any further forward and catch the tooth above rotor brooches can be reground quite a few times before the uh, the gashes at the end of the cutter need to be deepened. Uh, these are called uh, gullets, and after a while, after regrinding, they do get shallow, so you do need to deepen the gullet. Uh, some of these are very expensive machines which re sharpen rotor brooches, actually, do most of the sharpening in the gullet on the front face of the two angles. When I first uh, set, set up on this uh, cutter grinder for the angle, I actually used uh, a protractor on the edge of the bed and uh, used the base of the uh, attachment to get the correct angle. And here's the cutter with both angles uh, finished ground. The inner uh, angle is ground exactly the same way, same angle and same clearances. Well, this is... Um, a large batch of assorted uh, rotor roaches which uh, I've uh, I've finished with. Uh, even this uh, large one was ground without any difficulty. 
Well, it's been another interesting uh, job uh, grinding these. Uh, came out uh, okay, no problems. If you do by any chance have a, a small tool on cutter grinder and somebody does ask you if you can grind rotor brooches, well, have a go. Cause there's no mystery. It's just a matter of careful setting up and making sure that you've got the angles correct and the uh, and the clearances. I suppose it really is um, quicker and uh, more efficient if you use the actual dedicated grinding machine for these uh, type of cutters, but I think they're very, very expensive and, and also you probably need someone who's trained up uh, to use them. Anyway, something uh, a bit different. Uh, I hope you found it of interest. And, uh, and thanks for watching.